Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Inside the Box with CJT Creations. And I have another special guest this week, none other than Miss Kimberly. How are you doing today? Hello, I'm great. How are you? I'm doing good. Um, so thank you, first of all, for coming on this podcast and talking with me. Um, we definitely have uh, a bit of a history. Um, That's for sure. What, oh, how long? I guess 2017 now. Um, we first met each other. And yeah, like, tell me more, like, tell the people more about uh, our history. Or, right. Yeah. Well, you hated me at first. <laughs> yes, that is true. <laughs> I would say hate, hate's a strong word, but definitely didn't vibe from the jump. Yeah, yeah. I just um, definitely came off on the wrong foot with him because I, I had to bail on a project for my sister's wedding. I didn't have any choice, but... Yeah, like, no one cares about Laura. <laughs> <laughs> no one cares about Laura. <laughs> but, no, yeah. Which is, like, it was, it was like, a weird... Because it was, like, okay, so, like, all right, our first group project we have, mm-hmm. it's, like, so, guys, I'm actually going to be gone the whole time. We're going to actually... We need to film because we only had, like, a week turnaround or something like that. Yeah. And she's, like, but, like... But you was, like, okay, you also were, like, okay, I can... Let me do all the pre-production. Let me do all the paperwork for you guys. But then we were just, like... Mm. Well, I think it also didn't help that when I came back and we were in the editing processing or the edit, I just took over. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I want to be part of this now, but I wasn't there for filming. So right. yeah, I that definitely was, pissed Charles off. That was, yeah, I had like two people in my ear, like back, <laughs> it was like, you know, the good devil and then the, or not the good devil, the devil and the angel on one side of the ear just telling me, no, do this. No, you should do that. And I'm just like, oh, <laughs> like I'm just right. going to do what I want right. to do. Right, yeah. You know, but no, but I mean, it wasn't, you know, always rocky. We kind of. Uh, well, I think that's why we became such good friends, because right off the bat, we were just like super real with each other. True. You know, and then we both got deathly sick and we bonded over that At too. At the same time. <laughs> it was, I had flu and pneumonia. She had, had strep throat. Strep throat. And we were both was just miserable. And you gave me a ride to CVS to go get prescriptions. We and you went to Walgreens. Meds, yeah. We were opposite, like, <laughs> you know, pharmacies. And then, yeah, and then we both, a week later, <laughs> once we both had our system, we went out. That was also the week after we went to go to a party. And I, me not being a very smart human being, knowing that the antibiotics were still in my system for another week oh, didn't yes. realize that we were not drinking blacked out and i definitely <laughs> threw up all over your couch <laughs> which was no boy bueno. not just throw up you ate a shit ton of hot cheetos <laughs> and you threw those up so it was, everything was pink it was the worst yeah it, it wasn't a good like optic at all because of just like it looks like blood like i was throwing up blood it's yeah. like and i'm not responsive so of course it's like uh he's definitely dead <laughs> what am I going to do with this body? You know, like, well, but, the best part about it is I wasn't even up and awake yet. And you had vacuumed the entire <laughs> apartment, washing the couch cushions. Like I barely even knew what happened. Yeah. I, yeah. I definitely <laughs> felt bad. I was like, Oh my God. <laughs> like I had to like make it up. And that's, this is the kind of person I am. I'm not going to be a dick and be like, Oh, sorry, bro. Well, except for the right. frat guy who we I threw up on his couch and oh my god and that's how we got kicked out we got kicked out of the frat house I'm just partying dancing there like your friend's throwing up and I'm like no he's not what are you talking about and I look over and you're just spitting up on your whole body I was like oh Charles yeah I really didn't remember much <laughs> like I remember leaving your house blacked out threw up he said, hey, we got to run. And I was like, okay. We started running, blacked out, woke up. Wait, why up. were we running? Because you, I think they were chasing us. Oh. Yeah. They were. They yeah. were chasing us down the street. They were chasing us. And then he's like, we got to run. And I was like, all right. And then I just blacked out again, woke up, throw up, <laughs> blacked out, woke up. And I was like, holy shit. And then I was like, you know, I, like, I got to. So I went to Walmart. Got a bunch of supplies, cleaned up, you know, did the thing. I think I had to go to work that day too, but yeah, that's that's like I feel like how great friendships start, just over complete drunk nonsense, you know? Because that's when you get to like, I mean, you've seen me at some pretty drunk moments. Yeah, I mean, I've definitely seen yeah. you at some drunk moments. So yeah. I think we bonded definitely over that too. That's yeah, very true. Especially when Kim's was open, you know, when we had those <laughs> Thursday night uh, party at Kim's parties. Yeah, and those were really fun and. um it was crazy, like all, and then like it kind of became a thing. Like it really became a thing because we started getting people outside of our film class mm-hmm. that was coming, and then 
Um, that's when that's when I first met Cassie. Funny enough, I saw her again last Monday or like recently. Did you really? Yeah, like when I was at the Husk, and I'm just like with Marvin, and, and then I just looked to my right, and I was like. And I always keep running into her. I don't know what it is. It's Dude, some, stay away. <laughs> it's something that might happen. I, I feel like there's something like, because I remember it was in October of a year ago, mm-hmm. that same weekend, um, you had um, your friend come in town. And that's when I was like, wore that shirt that. Um, oh, I love that shirt. I wore that shirt and I was like, I was super Such drunk. A great shirt. And I was like in the hallway. She's like, hey, are you like an artist or something? And I was like, what? And this is like when I started like making music. And I was like, I kind of, but not really. Mm-hmm. I didn't like, you know, I don't say like, oh, I'm an artist or whatever like that. And she's like, no, I remember you from somewhere. Cause then, but this is after I cut my hair. So she didn't realize, like, I met her when I had my long hair and then I cut it. And then I was like, you know, I was like right when I cut it. And she's like, didn't recognize me. And so then she was like, I didn't recognize her because she had the bangs then. Like she just mm. then she just got up the bangs. And I was like, Oh, and I was like, oh, and then I was like, man, I mean, that's the thing. She does, I mean, she was she looks attractive to me. <laughs> and I was also drunk. And I think I keep running into her when I'm drunk. So then it's like, cause she's attractive yeah. and I'm drunk. I'm like, I need to talk to her. Yeah. And she followed me to I told her, meet me at because I was like, yo, we're going to Goodfellas. Meet me at Goodfellas by the end of the night. And we went to Goodfellas. That's when we lost you because you was off doing shenanigans. As per usual. Yes. And <laughs> I was like, okay. And then like, I'm like, you know, holding, I was grabbing your friend's hand and we was walking out and I saw her with my hand with her. And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> like you ever had a chance. <laughs> okay. You know, I had a chance. With, I think I had a chance with Cassie. I definitely think I had a chance with Cassie. Not your friend. But I mean, yes, you never yes, know. Yes. I mean, if I say the right words, you know, I'm pretty charming. Well, I think, I think anyone has a chance with Cassie, you know. Don't okay, don't she... see, okay, don't say that. Now you're gonna make you're gonna cheapen it. Okay, don't no, don't say that. Yeah, I don't I don't know her well enough to be speaking on her behalf. So But I mean, gosh, she was anyways, um so yeah, so that's kinda like kind of like how we we've kind of been through the gamut, really. We've done done it all. We've like you've been the catalyst that's pretty much propelled me in the Wilmington area, which sounds that sounds weird, uh, like uh, explaining it. But like you literally got me my last two jobs in Wilmington. Well, you know I got your back always. Yeah, you and know. I got yours. Yeah, your front and your back. You know, <laughs> and and I yeah I appreciate it. like you were definitely my. Mm. Mm, careful. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That, like you're definitely my in my like my best friends. You, I, I would say you're my first best friend in Wilmington. You and Ian were like <laughs> right there. I'm competing with Ian now. <laughs> I'll, okay, I yeah. look. I will say that you were definitely one of my first best friends here because I just broke up with my ex yeah and you hated my ex and we just like a good guy we had so yeah, much, yeah. <laughs> we don't need to talk about that um yeah no you were just so much fun and you like really pushed me to get out and have fun and i loved that like i mean yeah. even though like we partied a lot at my place it was because you were telling <laughs> complete strangers that i had no idea who where to come over that was actually the first time i we all went over to your place because we ditched class. Yeah, we ditched class. Yeah. The, and he's like, hey, I have food. What you didn't have food, by the way, at your place. <laughs> you just had this like candy. What was it? Like a little, like a I elf, don't even know. little sock thing. We well, had candy in it. You remember you supposed to put it like in your, over your it's uh, a, it's, sink. It's a bur. Wait, are you talking about the burlap sack? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a the sack. The ceramic burlap sack. I thought it was like sack. one of those like, um, the, what do you call those things? Stockings. No, 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 oh, no. Oh, okay. No, yeah. No. So I was like, oh, this is all you have. This is candy. <laughs> And I was like, I thought you said you had mac and cheese. And I'm just like. I was like, just trying to lure some friends in. <laughs> I had nothing to offer you guys. But ever since then, Kim's was open for business and we it's was true. there all the time. It's true. Yeah. And I, I was definitely more like, because I, I also, in that time in my life, I wanted to do more. Because like, mm-hmm. you know, coming from Maryland, I was like, not, didn't experience a lot. Didn't want, didn't do as much as I wanted to. So I got this opportunity to kind of like experience college, quote unquote. Right. And so, of course, I was like, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So then it just 
And then, like, you know, it was just, like, a perfect storm mm-hmm. of, like, us meeting at, the, like, the perfect time to now, you know, elevating each other. Because, I mean, I definitely think you corrupted me since I moved here. <laughs> and I appreciate it. you? You corrupted me. Oh, and, please. like, I was such, like, a macho guy. And now I'm, like, super sensitive. And, like, I care about people's feelings and stuff like that. And, like, I'm not that kind of guy. I, I don't care. But... You needed some some female friends. I feel That's like all true. you have now are female friends, <laughs> besides Ian. <laughs> Ian, Marvin. Okay, it's a balance. It's a balance. It's balance. I'm definitely around more guys now than I am previously, mm-hmm. which is good now because I think my balance was too female. Like I went like all like dudes, then a lot of girls. Yeah. To now I'm like at an even mix yeah. which i needed because i think i was getting too much estrogen to my head i needed more testosterone more <laughs> manliness around me and we're good now well it also like was a perfect scenario too like talking about timing wise because mm-hmm. we had all of the same classes together That's and true. we lived right next to each other like, yeah like neighbors yeah so we would walk home every night from class and we would just talk and that's mm-hmm. like definitely what strengthened our bond too i would say Very true and then we got our we made our how you say it, our break in the industry together. Mm-hmm. We are both film people. We are aspiring film <laughs> people. Film people. <laughs> Filmmakers. That's us. Yeah. And, you know, she got an opportunity to work on this really big project. And she's like, hey, they're looking for someone. Would you be interested? Which she thought, he might not be interested in it, but you never know. She yeah. threw it to me and I said yes. And I took the ball and ran with it. Yeah. Which was, it was definitely something I would never thought I would be doing, but it was fun. Mm-hmm. Made so many great friends, connections, and we, you know, we broke in together. And now we're on the fast track yep. to, you know, getting our hands on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Yep. I mean, I'm trying to take him with me back to California someday. So. I think I think I'm more ready or open to going to Cali now. Yeah. Than I was a year ago, hundred percent. I mean, it's, you got to feel right if you're gonna make a move like that. Yeah, it's know. huge because, like, I mean, yeah, I would be l- 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 moving away from family, but also be closer to family because my brother's on the west. Yeah. West, more western, not west coast. Um, which would be cool. So I wouldn't be like too far out for somebody, but at the same time, like. I've been noticing how much has changed in my family in terms of like everyone's starting to like do their own thing. And so I'm like, okay, so if everyone's doing their own thing, what am I doing? Right. right. And so like, I'm ready to like, to go and I'm ready to, to do my own thing now. So it's, it's just like, sorry, no, you're good. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um, and so, yeah. So, and I think that's why I'm like, I'm ready for like a move. I'm ready for like another change, which I feel like I'm always like, I get antsy after. So like, you know, cause I, I think I was in Maryland for three years and then I moved and moved down here. So now this is my third year in Wilmington. Mm-hmm. So I'm like three, I, I might have like a three year rule or something like yeah. that, you know? So. Well, I also feel like in the film industry, it's, it's hard to settle down somewhere, you mm-hmm. know? So it could be a good thing that you like to move around so much. And yeah. Because you, it's all about experiencing different people. Because that's they're going to lead you to different jobs and Very different productions. So I miss Stephanie. Oh, Steph, <laughs> Steph! If one day you hear this, <laughs> we love you so much. Oh my gosh! Like she was like just a ball of energy, and yeah. but she was just great. Like she was just hilarious. Like we still just, talk. She just yeah. like she'll always comment on like my Instagram stories okay. and she'll be like, Oh, like I miss you. Or like, you know, ask me like if I'm getting, if I'm working anywhere and stuff right. like that. So. Is she working anywhere? Uh, I guess I don't reciprocate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I guess I'm super selfish. <laughs> That's, I know. Cause she, she traveled, right? She went like a Yeah. Cost. She travels everywhere. She went to Ireland and, but I also know that she gets unemployment. Okay. So she like, doesn't, I feel like doesn't actively search <laughs> right. for jobs, which is okay. You know, she's making money still. So, True. but that's, but. that's dope though. Like, I mean, I don't know. That just excites me just knowing that like this job, this career path that I'm taking can lead to things. I always wanted to do was travel the mm-hmm. world and do different things. Like I saw jobs. I was like looking at jobs that were half like in LA and half in like Europe. And I was oh, yeah. like, or like London or something like that. And I was like, yo, that would be really cool. A to lot do. of war movies typically travel to Europe right. to do f- shooting. Oh, but so good. 
I mean, that was so, that was what was so great about Halloween is just besides the fact of actually getting to work on a real film, like we met so many people that I didn't even realize like what they do as a job or that mm. it was a job, Very you true. know, it opened so many doors. Cause I'm like, wow, like that I could, looks like something I could totally potentially do as a career. Um, but yeah, just like the stories that they had in the background they come from. And I mean, some people live in bumfuck nowhere and then they just get a film and then they go and they work on it and they go yeah. back to bumfuck nowhere. You right. Know? And so. the thing is like, you get these like, you know, and cause like, you probably would not make the amount of money and opportunities what you know working on these films and then like living in that area you know what i'm mm-hmm. saying and like that's what i'm like ready for because like i know i'm like three more movies away from being able to get called and traveled out which is i'm so ready right. to be traveled out somewhere right. and that was i can just be stationed where i want mm-hmm. you know and instead of being like okay i have to be local to where the works at. i have to be near the hub these hubs you know and so and that's be cool because I just I want to travel. Like there's so much of this world I haven't seen, and I think as soon as like, I just want to make my one trip around the world, you know, like every continent except for Antarctica because you know I don't like the cold. But <laughs> um, I just I want to make my rounds and like I you know get my passport taken care of now, yeah. so like I don't have any excuses, yep. you know, to leave the country or to do whatever. Well, except for like you know viruses and whatever i was gonna say you might want to hold off for a few years maybe (laughs) but you know but even still like you know like i just i don't want to like live in regret you know Mm -hmm. because like i always dreamed of these big things from a young age and you never really know like growing up like if your job will be able to afford you to do that you know what i mean like and or like you have opportunity through your job that to do it and with the career path that you know we're going like we have that easily like definitely imagine like being working on a movie for like three months in literally like hawaii you know right like paradise like working in paradise right. like you're always on vacation in a sense but you gotta do a little bit of work right that's kind of how i look at it I, i'm like so excited for it and yeah yeah so no awesome. i definitely agree it's i mean i do feel like it depends on what job you have when you travel and film because of you could definitely be working way more and have no time to enjoy it, which could maybe suck even more that True. you're in such an amazing place and you are stuck in a building, you know, the whole time stressing about film. Film people definitely party hard, though. Oh, yeah. Hard. <laughs> like, hard, play hard. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, and, and I get it. Like, you know, you still put in that nine to five Monday through Friday. But, you know, if you should definitely at least get that one day a couple... Yeah, I mean, we did have a coworker who really didn't experience much mm-hmm. of um, the area, which I was like, dang, like you know, it kind of sucks because like I want, yeah, cause you want to, because I think it was her first time too traveling out, mm-hmm. and so it's like that would be amazing to be able to, like you know, because you could just explore as much as possible. She got to explore a little bit, you know. She she did not just like totally did nothing, but I wish she would have like done more, got the most out of right. the trip. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's definitely an attitude. Also, you know, like you can choose just to sit in your hotel room and do nothing. Yeah. Or, I mean, I think I'd rather be just a little bit more exhausted and go and explore and see my surrounding area that I've never been to before. Yeah. So. And just imagine, like, when you can go back on your own time and on your own dime, you're like, oh, yeah, I already know, like, right. the cool spots. So they, right. So you can be like, live like a local, mm-hmm. you know, like, you know, I'm pretty sure when Andy and Justin comes back, like, they, they're they pretty much locals, <laughs> you know. I think like, all the bartenders know who they are, <laughs> yeah. pretty much. So, yeah, yeah, you know, I haven't seen you around in so long. I was like, well, <laughs> I live in L.A., yeah. but so I think um, that's just a cool thing. And, um, and I think last, you know, last thing before we start moving on. Um, I think what really made me want to do film so much and what made me want to travel so much is when my first ever professor in film, he um, he was just telling us how like he has like all these stories, which I love. I just love like a older man telling you stories about his life that he lived. Right. But then he said how he has a friend on each continent that he can literally go to and say, hey, like if I needed somewhere to stay. He could, you know, he has someone. Yeah. When, think about that, like in Europe, mm-hmm. in China, like Asia, like India, like all these places. And he knew people, he's been there. And I'm just like, whoa, like, you know, because like, I want to be able to live a life that um, I don't, what's the, how can I say this? I want to live a life that 
I've seen all of, as much of the unknown and and done a lot of unknown things, mm-hmm. at least in my world, because my world right now only consists of North Carolina, yeah. like the East Coast type, right. you know what I mean? Because that's all of the world I've ever known. Well, I mean, a little bit of the, like in Vegas, but you know what I mean? Like I just, because it's like, in my head, it's like, it's like back in the old days, like old days, but like <laughs> way back when it was like all this undiscovered land that I personally have. I mean, of course it's discovered and you know, all that now, but it's like for me in my head, it's like, it's undiscovered and I've never been there. I've yeah. never seen it. And I want to be able to discover it all on my own as long as possible or as, not as quick as possible, but like be able to get it done, you know, by the time I'm like 50, 60 yeah. years old, you know, when I can still enjoy it, you know, versus I don't want to be a person at the end of my life where, of course you want to make the most of your life anyway, but I don't want, I want to be able to fully enjoy every experience in these towns. Right. So. Well, being like in the film industry and being like you and me personally, storytellers, like that is all experience that you put into your work at the mm. end of the day, you know, that is true. Yeah. like you meet, you see so many different things. You meet so many different people that it inspires you to write about these people and these things. And I mean, just like, you know, possibly sitting at a coffee shop in Europe and yeah. watching just a scenario go down <laughs> right. and you don't even know what language they're speaking possibly, but, but you create, right. yeah, exactly. You're creating your own story in your mind. And I think that's just like what a storyteller is, you know? Mm. So it's so valuable to get those experiences. That's very true. Have you ever done that? Like, I want to say cliche, but like right in this coffee shop. <laughs> um, not with people. Okay. I mean, my mom liked to do it with dogs. Like, you know, like, wait, 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 like I, if, if what I'm understanding your question, like if we see two dogs hanging, chilling, yeah. like doing whatever they do, like, we'll like, you know, make voices for them. <laughs> um. People, I'm not like quick and witty enough to watch a conversation and try to dub it, you know? Like, dogs, I'm just dumb enough and silly where I can be like, oh, like, you know, what's up, man? <laughs> That's not exactly what I meant, but... <laughs> um, it's more of like, you know, like, you know, like the screenwriter in, like, a Starbucks writing... Co- uh, you know, he's writing his book, or, like, an author writing his book mm-hmm. in a coffee shop. Like, do you... Have you done that? Oh, like, actually gone somewhere and wrote? Oh, yeah. I was way off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like... Um, I think I had my... I wanted to just say that in my mind, so I okay. heard what I wanted to hear. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. I mean, that, that was good. That was <laughs> um, no, I'm not a good social worker, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Like, I, I maybe had been in the library three times in oh, my yeah, life to actually true. work. Like, I just, I get way too distracted, and I also be like, I can be way more comfortable at home in bed mm-hmm. in my PJs, you know? I'm the complete opposite. Yeah. Well, okay, so I haven't done it. Like, I always, keep, I always dream about doing it because I feel like, I do my best work when I'm not in my comfort zone, in my comfort space, just because that, um, like, I'm too comfortable here. So I know, like, yeah. I can just go over here and lay on my bed. I'm like, uh, I'm back to, like, my routine once I'm off work. And so it's hard to kind of separate church and state. So, like, you know, I literally will walk over there to do my work and edit. Right. You know, versus, like, I could just, like, uh, I'm back over here and I can, like, easily stop. But, like, I feel like if I'm, like, I know I'm all at work, I'm all in. I'm always just going to be chipping away at that. And so I need to kind of be away from being comfortable. So even like if I just walk outside of my room, mm-hmm. you know. Well, also, but, I feel like you're someone who really feeds off of other people's energy, too. Mm. So being like in a library or a coffee shop where everyone's hardly like at work. Very true. Hard at work. Then you would you like feel that, too, you know. Yeah. Um, that's very true because um, especially when I have like uh, I need I like the feeling of you can feel the. How do you say this without being weird? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Like being, you can feel the social energy mm-hmm. when you just like when I walk out in Walmart or to Target and I'm just around people. I feel that energy, especially if I'm like in a down mood. I like to do that just because it's like one, I probably isolated myself for so long to where I need to like be around people. And so once I do that, then I'm like, okay, yeah. you know, start to kind of like rework things out. That's why I like to go to the gym um, and, you know, be around people. And it's, it's really helpful, especially of course you're working out and getting those, uh, endorphins mm-hmm. rushing and stuff like that but see i'm like definitely the complete opposite like i need silence and concentration and like low lighting <laughs> i don't know if that makes sense <laughs> you're setting the whole moves like oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know and then just like okay yeah i'm starting to get this and then it's like oh not yet candle candle <laughs> Make it aromas. Very sensual. yeah it's like and then you start typing <laughs> right <laughs> and turn <laughs> 
day <laughs> living rooms. <laughs> Damn, okay, what's next? You're <laughs> like an hour setting the whole mood and then you just write for like two minutes. You know, like on Celtic, have you used Celtic uh, uh, mm-hmm. screenwriter? And I hate that it shows you at the bottom how much you actually did work and how much you like were just like idle. Oh, that's idle. so trash. Yo, that will have me, I, maybe it's like a good mental thing yeah. because it's like, wait, I've been not doing anything. Let me, you know what I mean? But it's like at the same time, I'll be so conscious of that. And when something's like uh, modern yeah. to me like that, it just, it kind of eats at me and kind of fucks me up and just like throws off my whole mood and everything like that. But I don't like that because the whole part of screenwriting is like, thinking about what you're writing and right. if the story makes sense. And like, I mean, I take pauses, I write notes down. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes I also just write and I just let it be a mess. And then mm-hmm. I go back and rewrite and right. look at it and be like, wow, none of that made sense, you know? True. But sometimes like when you stop the flow, like like what you just said, you think about things too much mm-hmm. and then it can mess up your whole story. And I mean, I get the what it's, I guess it's trying to accomplish by um, saying, hey, work like it's kind of like a, a a measure to like push you because like oh i've been doing this too. Mm-hmm. Like, i need to like actually do work but at the same time like you know if you're like me it can do the opposite effect of what i guess it's intended to do you know yeah but um yeah that was great so moving on to song of the week <laughs> um so <laughs> So I need to much. dub some some sound in right there. I could. <laughs> or is it just going to be you? Song of the week. <laughs> song of the week. <laughs> Something like that. Um, so, uh, so yeah, pretty much I, I have a playlist now on Spotify where every um, song of the week I've recommended songs and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I put it on there um, for anyone to check out. It's on Spotify's public. It's called Songs of the Week with CJT Creations. And... So, last week, I was definitely, I needed a change in um, my routine, because I've just kept listening to the same music over and over mm-hmm. again. And so, what I did was, I've been listening to a lot of rock music, actually. Yes, I've been, my favorite. I was listening, well, I was, I don't know, I guess, it's like older school, you know, Metallica, ACDC, Ozzy. I don't know, I guess Ozzy might be considered metal. Um Green Day, which I, oh not Green Day, <laughs> Fallout Boy. I, I, I'm getting Fall Green Day, Boy. yeah, Fallout Boy. Um, uh, I was listening to a lot of that, and that was my first realization that you are like I don't know who you are. <laughs> is when I see you <laughs> quoting the whole song of Thanks for the Memories, and I was like, who is this man? That is one of my favorite songs. <laughs> like, it's like I went through a phase, like. When I was in middle school, I just went through like so many different phases, and one of my phases was like listening to like rock metal. Mm-hmm. I had a friend, but like my friend Mark, he really like he showed me a lot of music. I mean, I mean like so much different like metal, heavy metal, death metal, pig snorting, like Scottish rock, like so much stuff that was like whoa. But like I was into it because I was yeah. like also doing skateboarding at the time, so I was like <laughs> I feel like this is like the whole culture. Like yeah, like that's how like. I mean, I literally, my mom would tell you, like, I would literally did, like, hey, I wanted to be a race car driver. Hey, I wanted to be a chef. I wanted to be a plastic surgeon. I wanted to be, this. like, I you know, I would just want to do so much. And so, you know, rock, I, I like, it's the energy that I get from rock, mm-hmm. you know, I, I don't love it to work out too. And that's why I need to switch up with my workout routine. And so I've been, it was such, I had probably one of my best workouts when I was listening to rock because I was just like, it it felt fresh. Yeah. Because like when you kind of listen to the same songs over and over and you just anticipate, so then it becomes more of like white noise. And which, you know, I like, sometimes I need, I like to hear the music to like really kind of like use it as a soundtrack to kind of like kill this workout, you know? And so that was kind of like my big motivation last week. Um, This week, um, I'm definitely kind of back in the hip hop groove. Um, There's more of like, trap music yes you can call it yeah um i'm definitely still a huge young thug fan still listen to a lot of young thug um but the album i keep going back to is russ it's called uh shake the snow globe he's like um his name is russ his name is russ okay. yeah and it's, his latest project was called shake the snow globe and it's he's like a i want to say r&b but he's definitely hip-hop he raps. He raps a lot more in this album than he does. But he, his vocals are really like he has really big hits called "What They Want," um, uh, "Losing Control." Um, it's so many. I'm like, it's so he has like so many hits, and but like he raps a lot more and he tells a lot more stories about like his life, how his life has changed now that he's been in the industry and the things that like the adjustments of you know now he has he bought a mansion 
And he bought a mansion for his mom right down the street yeah. and stuff like that. And I just been digesting that. And, you know, I, it takes me like a month of to really digest the project before, like, you know, I'm like, yeah, I, you know, mm-hmm. I, I love the project. I mean, I love Russ. He's one of my favorites. He's definitely my top five artist. And that's pretty much what I've been, you know, still listening to, you know, because I, I don't like, because a lot of people just like listen to albums like one time or two times and be like, oh, I'm done with it. Yeah. They're like, oh, we need more music from you. Like, no, this project just came out. Like, because right. the music changes, like, like when you hear like, so, okay, so for example, um, Childish Gambino dropped Awaken My Love. Mm-hmm. And when I first heard it, I was like, whoa, this is so different. Because, you know, I was wanting some rapping. But, like, he's evolving as an artist, and I have to respect that. And But then you, when you listen to it and hear it, like, it's about him in the status of being a father and meeting his wife and him having kids. Mm-hmm. And, like, that whole new part of life. And it's so beautiful. And then, like, all the different, like, um, um, how do you say, like... <sighs> Like the challenges of being a parent, about you know, dealing with things that happen in society, and it's just it's just it's so much beautiful. Then when you start, then when stuff happens to you in your life, and then you go back and listen to that project again, and you're like, whoa, it like right. hits different. You know, that's like one of my favorite saying. I just hits different, <laughs> and it it's just like. I don't know. It's just, I, I just, you have to keep listening to projects because like the more you grow as a person and you go back to what that person was going through at that time, you're like, whoa, now I really relate to yeah. them. Or versus like, dang, you know, I remember that. Cause like when I go back to listen to camp, one of his first albums, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's doesn't fit how I am now because it was, um, cause like he, he was talking about being a boy and kind of growing up and not being the same and not being accepted. And I've definitely felt that in middle school, you know, cause everyone kind of goes through those middle mm-hmm. school, you know, and, it, and that's literally when it came out when I was in middle school. So I've been like growing with, you know, Donald Childish Gambino. <laughs> and so it was like, dang, like, you know, but I, I still understand. I still, it still re- brings back those memories of like being that middle school kid <laughs> trying to figure out how to get a girl to like you and you know, this, this and that. Yeah. And it was pretty cool. Like, and I just, I mean, I just love that. Um, what music, like how an album can really like affect you and can be like, when you will hear it, it reminds you of this. Like when I heard Channel Orange, I was still in high school and it right. reminds me of like when I was talking to this one girl. And so it's like hard. Every time I see that song, one uh, thinking about you is like, uh, I do think about that person, you right, know? Right, yeah. And I mean, music is just so powerful, you know? I mean, well, that's the strong thing about music is you can listen to a song and like it for certain reasons. Like maybe you just like the lyrics or the beat mm-hmm. or whatever. And then you hear it a few years down the road and whatever situation you're at that moment, you might be able to re- relate to it way more. And then you love the song even more, you know? Right. And I mean, like you were talking about, like just listening to an album at a different time of your life. Like mm-hmm. I've definitely been in that situation where I've heard a song or an album and I'm like, yeah, it's okay. You know, it's whatever. Right, right. And then but whatever they're talking about, you know, years down the road, I listen to it and I can exactly relate. And all of a sudden I'm in love with it, you mm-hmm. know, so I totally understand all that. Yeah. I'm like that with um, or the artist with uh, Tyler Creator. Like when he was first doing like the Goblin stuff and that like. Right. He I was just, much more aggressive. Yeah. And I just didn't <laughs> like it. And plus he was like, I mean, it was different and that was his art. But then once he became more melodic when Flower Boy came out, that's mm-hmm. when I became a fan. And I was like, whoa, you know what I mean? Like. This is like the Tyler I can get behind, and then Igor came out, which was a oh, perfect album, you so know. Great. And he deserved that Grammy, yeah. you know. Um, well, it's funny because I actually listened a lot to Tyler when I was in high school because I was a reckless teenager who was partying all the time, <laughs> right. and his music like matched the like energy that. and the attitude that I was right, bringing right, right. into my life. And then Flower Boy, I was like, oh, this is so lame, <laughs> you know. I kind of <laughs> thought that, but now, like, as an almost twenty-four year old woman, you know, I really enjoy like Igor and mm. I like it I like how mellow he is now yeah, yeah. it's like he's like growing like I'm growing with him you know exactly. and vice versa so I, the growth I love when artists grow and change and versus like I mean I understand if you make millions off of this one style and this milk it to the cows come home but like <clears throat> but like true artistry it's like dang they change when then people grow with you exactly and yeah. that's just that's so beautiful and it's funny because I feel like when an artist does change and they start to evolve, they have to apologize to their fans mm. and their fans throw a fit and then like give it a few years. And they're like, I was like, I can't believe I was even listening to what they used to make. Right. You know, and I mean, this is like a like a I was thinking about Harry Styles okay. and how different he is than when he was in One Direction. And everyone like 
freaked out when he lo- when <laughs> like he left One solo, Direction. Right, yeah. Yeah, but then I heard his music on the radio, and I I had to be like, who is this? Like mm-hmm. I had to look it up. I was like, holy shit, this is Harry Styles. You know, That's... like I mean, it's just like people grow, and like it's you got to respect them and let them do it. You know. Very true. So, what are you listening to this week? Oh, I don't know. It always changes. I'm, <coughs> I'm, I'm definitely in a music rut. Like, oh, okay. I like like what you were saying. I love music so much, and I equate it almost to what I'm like mentally going through at the time. Right. When I have when I find good music, I think it's because I'm happy. I'm like truly happy. I'm in a good mood. Oh, and when okay. I can't find good music, I think it's because I'm like have my own turmoil. Right. And like I just won't let it in or accept it. You know, but there are times when I'm like super sad and depressed and I hear a super sad and depressing song. And I'm right. like, oh, like, yes, yeah, I love this right now. Right notes. Yeah. yeah, but um, I did actually make it one of my New Year's resolutions to try to get more like to do a lot of more discovery music. Because I used to sit there for hours on Spotify and just go through different artists mm-hmm. and find different songs. And I just add it to a playlist and I had like a playlist of over 400 songs that I barely even knew. But right. like I that's how I discovered all the music that I like. Mm. Um. I will say I've been getting more into Frank Ocean. Ooh, yeah, okay. like I didn't listen to him a lot right, right. when he was like famous or I mean, I know he's still pretty famous, <laughs> but I mean, like when he, he was, was like actually peak, making music, yeah, like his peak of like, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, no one's heard from him <laughs> besides Coachella. That's like, that's, I don't know. That's, I, don't, I like that mystery. Like, I don't know. Same. It just adds like to his like his whole persona in a way is like people want your music because like you can easily take a hiatus and be like, oh, Oh, you release new music. Okay, right. cool. But then, like, when people are like, where is he yeah. at? I need it. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that shows you, like, what you're doing is affecting people and exactly. it's impacting people. Like, they're begging for his music. Right. Yeah. It's like, um, designer. I don't know if you know this. Rapper, he had this song called Panda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Panda, yeah. Panda, Panda. That's Panda. all I know. <laughs> yeah, that's all he got. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know? And then, so it was like, he took, I mean, he took like a while. He kind of took a break, which was kind of crazy, but he made so much money off that one song. And then when he finally actually did release an album, he kind of cooled down. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, Okay. Cool. Sometimes people are just good for one hit wonders, you know? Hey, if you can make if you can buy a whole house off a of one hit. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Yeah. <laughs> and you and it's a song that's probably gonna be played like like if you can make a a bar club single, mm-hmm. like they still play songs from like two thousand eight. Oh yeah. That's you know what like I'm saying? all I listen to. <laughs> so it's just like, you know, if you all you need is that one. Yeah. And you can get them residuals, them uh royalties forever, you know. Right. Yeah, no, I'm definitely um, appreciating Frank Ocean more. I mean, I okay. knew his, like, popular ones, you right. know, like Novocaine, like Thinking About mm-hmm. You, Forrest Gump and all of that. But um, I've definitely gotten into him more, and I'm starting, like, I really enjoy his music. I okay. really enjoy that he has a spiritual side to him that I've mm-hmm. never really noticed, you know? Right. Um, I respect how he can make a super, like mellow song but his next one could be a, like such a bop you know right. like upbeat like banger and like the flow of the album you trying to say yeah but it's not like night and day you know it, right. it flows and it's like i just feel like he's a poet who sings and i really like Ooh. respect his music okay. you know i like the way you, you phrased that that was pretty cool <laughs> like i'm i really wish i could see him at coachella but <laughs> oh yeah coachella this he, year? yeah he's headlining and it's oh. like he hasn't made i mean he did make I in my just, room, like not too long ago. But, yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, it would be really amazing. I think to see him in concert. Yeah, I think I've only had. There's only one. There's maybe like a couple people I would want to see. Like I want to see. I mean, in a perfect world, I want to go see Kanye West in concert. Right. But I've I, passed that point because of less like how I don't want to go to a. I don't want to pay money for a concert and be like. Is he going to cancel? Is he uh, going to be good? You know? And I just had that happen to me with the Chance concert that just got canceled, which is like, pissed me off. Yeah. <clears throat> and so, you know, and like, so like the concerts I've been to, like, you know, I think the last concert I've been to was probably in 2016, maybe? Oh, wow. Yeah. It's been a while now. And like, I love, like, I love live music. Like the feeling of live music mm-hmm. is just different. Oh, it's so amazing. Yeah. And so I really do, I was supposed to, yeah, and this Chance concert was would have been my first arena concert, too. I've never been into arena. Oh, really? Yeah, I was in, like, the small venue, which I really like. You know, I'm not, like, a boss pitting <laughs> or anything like that, but, like, um, but it's, it's just more intimate. And so I think uh, I want to see Russ in concert, and 
that's pretty much it. I saw Childish Gambino like right after my Such birthday. A dream. Yeah, it was a dream. Yeah. Like I think I could literally like, yo, I'm good. Like I literally was like, I experienced everything, you know. But if I can ever see him again in concert, I will go for it. You know, right. twice was like that would be cake. That's like extra more than I need. Yeah. You know. So like pretty much at least for me for artists that I like follow right now that's all the people that I think I need to see well yeah. actually maybe Saint John I just start I'm just started getting on him he's like this New York rapper who's like he's a big writer he did a lot of uh, songs for like Rihanna he did a song with Beyonce oh, recently okay. now he's having his own career start to come up and his music is like really like um, it's like Kid Cudi. Like a hard, he's he calls himself the ghetto uh, Lenny Kravitz, <laughs> and so, um, but he's like you know hard trap beats, but then he can sing and make some like really like melodic stuff yeah. as well. And so I just like his balance, you know. And his collection one was really good. If you want to check him out, like his collection one was like my favorite. And he has a he had a new project that came out last year called Ghetto uh, Love Songs or Ghetto Lenny's Love Songs. Oh, okay, and it's just a you know phenomenal yeah. stuff you know and so i've been like i can't believe i like because i heard like one song called like mcdonald's rich and it's like i'm mcdonald's rich which is like dang that's i relate to that you know <laughs> yeah. and then like okay but i didn't realize it was him until i started then also i keep getting these recommendations from him again him again and then i'm like oh collection one so i listened to his album and then i kept listening to it and i'm like man i really love this album and then his new album came out and I'm like, man, like, you know, so like, I'm right. like becoming a fan, you know, I'm not, I, I, I say I like him, but I'm not a, a whole fan yet. Cause I want to be able to see more of his music videos, see more, mm-hmm. like know more about him before I become a fan for sure. Yeah. So, I mean, that's fun. I just went to my first rap concert. Oh yeah. I went and saw Earth Gang and oh, yeah, Mick yeah, Jenkins. Yeah, yeah. How was that? It was amazing. I mean, I don't, I got him my, the tickets for Will, yeah. my boyfriend and, um, I I listened to some of their music, but nothing really stood out to me. Yeah. But like you said, seeing music in con- in person is just makes such the difference, you Huge know. Huge difference. Yeah. So I had such a great time, and I really like respect their music more. Mm-hmm. And I and even just being to my first rap concert, like that was definitely different. <laughs> yeah. You know, most concerts I've been to were either alternative or like EDM. Okay. You know, where it's like there's no words. You know, <laughs> it's just like a bunch of people tripping, dancing. Yeah. You know. But then you like when everyone's like singing along. That like how. Yeah, like energy's... it's such a great feeling. Yeah, but like being there, like we were in Charlotte in this tiny venue, so mm. and it was super intimate, yeah. and it was a great like we had such a fun time. And, um, uh, how was it when they played "Proud of You"? Oh, see, that's I, that's the one of their songs I totally jam out to, and everyone's just like screaming at the yeah. top of their lungs. Like I literally went with a sprained ankle and was <laughs> jumping up and I mean I was like pretty drunk too, yeah. so I didn't care right. at all. But yeah, I, uh, I definitely fucked oh, it up definitely a little bit more. Yeah. yeah, but it was worth it. You know, like my biggest pet peeve are people go to concerts and just stand there, right, and, and just then, stare like, and video <laughs> it or whatever. Just yeah, like their they're on their phone or. We had like a couple behind us that was like mad at how tall Will was. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's um, hilarious. We had to deal with them, but I'm just like, dude, like you're at a concert, relax, right. be happy, listen to music. You know, exactly. it's like you yeah. could be way worse off right now. So big facts. Yeah. <laughs> I forget how tall Will yeah, is. Yeah, they were. It's like, like, think about if you guys were like in the front row. Oh, I get this tall. Yeah, <laughs> the poor oh, guy. That's hilarious. <laughs> she literally asked. She asked um, him to like switch places with me mm-hmm. so that I was standing in front of her so that she could like what? see. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I guess we can deal right. with this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's hilarious. That's a good laugh. Yeah. All right. Alrighty. So now we're gonna have a very special story time. Story time. And since we're both storytellers, as we were talking about <laughs> earlier. We are both going to present an idea that we can possibly turn into a feature, you know, make money. Question mark. Yeah, like <laughs> sign us now, Sony, Paramount. Are you listening? <laughs> like Warner Brothers. Um. So okay. So I really love. Okay. So what the type of movies I really like are '90s cop movies, um, thrillers, uh. Comedies, of course, action comedy. Yeah. Mm. I feel like you drama. You're, I was just about oh, to say I'm huge in the drama. You're such a drama but fan. Dr- but like, I'm more drama for television because yeah, I think drama done with television, it feels so much better. Especially if you've been watching a st- like 
four seasons yeah. deep, you know? That's how I'm with, like, This Is Us right now. This is us. Like, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> God, yeah. Like, I try to get my uh, brother's girlfriend to watch it, and she just can't. She just finished, just passed the part, well, spoiler alert, where Jack dies. Yeah. And not really. It's not really a spoiler, <laughs> but yeah, if you know the show. Yeah. But she was just like, I can't do this show anymore. Like, oh, man. you know, because she's just like crying like after every episode, Same. you know. Yeah. And it is, it's a sad show, but it's like, but it's like, it's so real. And well, I feel like, and I don't want to like shit on drama shows because I love them just as much. Like, right. I binge Grey's Anatomy all the time. I don't know how you could do that. <laughs> it's too many seasons. That's too deep for it's me. It's too to go. much. Yeah. You yeah. gotta, you gotta start off and, you know, I've watched it for a long time. But um, I feel like the drama can be silly, like to the oh, point. Oh, easily, yeah. It, but you don't, in those moments, you don't see it as silly. But if you mm. were to see all of that go down in a movie, you'd <laughs> right. be like, this is so ridiculous and right. dramatic and unnecessary, you know. But because a TV show, you grow with the characters, you love the characters, so you like relate to what they're going through. So right. you don't look at how like <coughs> ridiculous it can be, you know. But if anyone walks in on you watching it, they're like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> and you're like, you know, on the edge of your seat, yeah. just like, oh, shut up, shut yeah, up. Like, like, you know? You'll never understand. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've, um, so I, I got into like a couple like Tyler Perry, like, um, uh, drama shows. And they're, a lot of Tyler Perry stuff is a lot of really soap opery. Yeah, and definitely. I like, I was like really into it like back in like 2015. Mm-hmm. And I recently saw that they, he got some stuff put onto Hulu. So I was like, oh, let me see where I could like, literally a whole season will be one day of the thing, same thing to happen, but cut up in like such small increments. It's like not the story oh. didn't progress at freaking all. And I'd yeah. be like, whatever. So then like I went to, so I went back to that around the season. I was like, damn, what? Oh my God, let me, let me stop. <laughs> so I went back on Hulu and watched the show from the season where I was at. And, I was looking at, you know, the show again. I was like, whoa, this is trash. Yeah. You know, and it's like, it was so trash because I'm not in it. I wasn't like all caught up. Mm -hmm. And this is also, I started watching pre-film school too as well. So that can be a difference. And, but like, this is us. I feel like this, I'm going to be that person. This is us is different. It's not like. It is different. I will say, I I think it's different than anything that's been on TV in a long time. And everything is trying to replicate from it, it, which is something, that's how you know it's successful. Oh, 100%. It it definitely gives you all the feels. I'm I'm not going to lie. I've cried at least four times watching the show. Every time I watch the show, I cry. That's why I had to stop watching it. Yeah, it's an emotion. (laughs) It's it's draining, but it's so (laughs) Good it's though. like watching the Joker over and over and over and over. Ooh. You just like feel depressed and you need to cry and you're like, I don't even know why I'm crying. I don't know if I can rewatch the Joker again. That's how I feel with this is us. It's like, I mean, Joker's a lot, you know. It's, uh, it's a lot. It's so yeah. good, but it's like, whew. yeah. Whoa. It took a toll. I was like silent for like two hours after I watched really? the movie. I was like, I need to just be by myself a little bit. <sighs> That's insane. <laughs> Speaking of movies, real quick before we move on. Um, have you seen 1917? Yes, I've seen it twice. Okay, so I was thinking, I was debating on seeing it again. I just saw it yesterday. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, first it's of all, so I saw it with a bunch of old people. The worst. Never go yeah. to a movie theater at 12 o'clock. Oh, that's why I love to go because I am an old person. But they, they <laughs> talk throughout the whole movie. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, shut up. And they're talking, and like, literally, it was this couple behind me. This lady was like, I don't understand what's happening. <laughs> and then, like, the, the husband was like, well, this is happening. And he's like whispering like a low. He's like, I can't hear you. <laughs> and it's like that was actually me. Oh, right. <laughs> and I was like, yo, like. And then the guy in front of me ha- was on his phone. Oh. And it screams bright. Yeah. Like if you're gonna be on your phone, at least have your like brightness all the way down. But it still didn't take away from the movie because I yeah. literally I felt myself going to the edge of my seat. Exactly. And I just, I think biggest thing too, because I never want to say like, it's like shot like one shot mm-hmm. and I'm like being a film You're buff. Watching that, for I'm it. like, yeah. where's the cut? And I, I've seen where they can make yeah. cuts, but it's so done well. Oh, it was beautiful. No, I, what I love about that movie is that I feel like nowadays I am kind of looking for time markers in every movie i'm like oh we're at the climax like oh, oh. you know like and it kind of ruins it for me and right, i think right. like you said like being a film major it it kind of takes the, right right the magic out of everything but um with but when that something's movie, good enough that you can forget about exactly that? like exactly because that movie's continuous and like i mean obviously they still build the climax but right. it's like you don't know what's gonna happen when it's gonna happen mm-hmm. or like if it's about to end or like you really don't know and i will say watching it for the second time was great because 
I didn't look for all the cuts. Oh, you know, because okay. I was also like, right, right. I'm like, oh, it's going dark here. Like, exactly, oh, yeah, exactly. yeah like when they're going goes, into like yeah. someone's shirt, you know. Quick, you know. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, seeing it for the second time, I appreciated it mm. more. And it's just such a great movie in general. Such so. a, I think. Um, OK, so this is definitely going to be a spoiler for sure. Like um, <laughs> when ooh, I can't remember the corporal who's, who he was looking for his brother died. Mm hmm. And I was like, yo, like... You had no idea it was coming. Yo, yeah, I, I didn't think he was going to die. I thought he was going to at least, like, he was going to have that wound, kind of like how when uh, the first guy cut his hand, it was just like, he going to keep pushing yeah. him. But that was it for him. And and I think, I don't know, this is, I always, when I think about uh, storytelling and script writing, I always think about Terry Linehan. Yeah. He's like, make your characters go through it the most. Like, literally, and like, give them hell. Mm -hmm. And then I was just like, yo, like, he literally went through hell just to do something, which wasn't his own... Uh, initial objective he just was tagged along right. and then he took it on upon himself when his friend died to make sure he, and then make sure to find his brother too at the end exactly yeah god <sighs> i mean one of my fate one of my sorry let me start over one of my least favorite things about movies is how they go into backstory of characters mm. i legit is when i snooze because i'm like Honestly, I don't care. Right, yeah. <laughs> I mean, some people do it really well and some people don't. But in this movie, as an example, of, they did it so well because, mm -hmm. I mean, again, spoiler alert, but like <laughs> the main character who ends up living and gets through it all, like you find out at the end that he has two children and a wife. And it's like, we don't ever hear about him talking about how much, how much he misses them right, or anything right. like that. It was they, that but one they give moment. little hints throughout yeah. it, you know, like. There's like a woman and her child and she asks him, like, do you have any children? And he just like kind of quiet. But you never like sit there yeah, and like think doesn't. about what his backstory is, you know. So it's like I respect movies like that because that's how it is in the <coughs> real world. You know, you don't sit yeah. there talking about everything you've been through in your life. And um, so that was a big like factor for me, how much I appreciate it. They that. give the it's like because they give the audience credibility and opportunity to figure it out. Yeah. And well, sometimes I, I mean, if you know your audience you might have to dumb it down, but at the same time, it's like, if you have active li watchers, they're going to be like, wait, 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 wait. Oh, and then, but then when things go full circle, that's right. when, see, you can have these little moments, but not and go full circle. Like, why was that there? But then when it goes full circle to like the, like the very end, when he literally goes back to the same position he was when the movie yeah, started. Yeah, exactly. And then, then yeah. you find out that piece that he did have it's great did it win an oscar did it win any oscars it won best cinematography and i believe maybe best no sound i don't it, know if we could get sound i don't think it did i'm but i think it did win something else yeah okay that's good i know for won. sure best cinematography okay i mean yeah. even if like there was another runner-up i feel like it's gotten in the bag you yeah know? i mean just the fact that like i don't know if other people respect this like who aren't film majors but right do you know how hard it is to shoot something with not artificial light? Like when you're just depending on the sun outside. Yeah, you have to start so early to set up. Oh I mean, you my have gosh. to start at night. You probably start. You probably do night shoots. Probably start at probably like you know two a.m. Right. just to get everything set up for yeah. once you at the crack of dawn. You know what I mean? Like, and you can't take multiple like shots. You no. know because the sun will be in a, just different in a few minutes a different position, which can make the whole scene look completely wrong. Yeah. You know. So it's like I respected the hell out of that. The Revenant did that as well. I haven't. The, I didn't watch The Revenant. I know I need to watch it. The Revenant <laughs> was my favorite movie of 2015, 2016. I think that's when it yeah. came out. And oh my god, because that's when all the jokes about the bear, right? Leo the and the bear, bear, yeah. But it was so good, and, I, and this is and what made this so good because this is like right when I was in, like I just started doing film stuff. Uh, okay. And so I'm just like appreciating mm -hmm. every video, like. <gasps> The light over here is like such a nerd now. yeah you know what I mean? and i was just like wow but it was i don't know i really felt something with that especially the performance of just like the close-ups with leo when he's like suffering and how much he suffers yeah. in that i know i really need to watch it i don't know why i i felt like <coughs> i really only knew about it until after leo won an award for it mm -hmm. and i just felt like everything was too forced mm. like yeah yeah i don't know like they set him up to win it so i don't know but i'm sure it is a great movie i need yeah, to watch it's, it it's good like, I mean, but that's kind of like what the award season does. It kind of, yeah. you know, a lot of stuff kind of goes on the radar, but it does get awards. And then it kind of adds even more 
um, recognition, especially right. like TV shows too. Like Parasite. Like I'm so happy that Parasite got <coughs> its recognition that it deserves. It's in theater still. It is, yeah. And I, when I went to the movie, I was like, yo, Parasite? But it's like, I don't know. I'm kind of, this is going to sound really weird. I don't think I could watch Parasite again in the theaters. Oh. I haven't seen it. Oh, you haven't seen no, it? No, I want to, but I haven't seen it out because it's in the theaters. I can like, oh, I can go see that in the theaters, but it's like, I don't know if I, because I know 1917, I needed to see yeah. it in theaters. You know, like if I want to go see, did Quiet Place 2 come out yet or no? No, March 20th, I okay. believe. That you kind of have to see in theaters oh, too. for sure. Yeah. Quiet Place you had to see in theaters, yeah. 100%. So it was one of those movies where I think I can enjoy it more at home, especially because it's a foreign film. Yeah. I will say like, I mean, I feel like we're pretty adjusted to seeing subtitles. Like yeah. that's not something that's new to us. Um, but I mean, there's a lot of people who are really into the anime culture. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's a long movie. How long is it? Um, I don't actually know, but <coughs> I just know watching it. It felt long? I got, you Is it know, a horror movie? It's not a horror. It's definitely a thriller. Okay. And it's, I, I think it totally deserved winning best picture and best okay. director. Um, but I did have some like problems with it. Like two hours, 12 minutes. Yeah. Two hours, 12 99 minutes. 99 on Rotten Tomatoes, by the way. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's an amazing film. It's. Like, it released it October fifth. Yeah, no, we I saw it forever ago. Damn. Um, we were still working on Halloween when I saw it. Yeah. Yeah, and then it definitely blew up. But I just really respected what the director said at um, what awards was it? Not it wasn't the Oscars. It, he won something. It was, the, was it the? I think it was the uh, the Academy something or the Screen? No, 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 no. Was it SAG? It might have been SAG. I don't even. There's so no, many, I, think, I don't even know. Yeah, it's so many different. Yeah, ones. I, I was just watched his inner, uh, his acceptance speech, and he made a comment that I really liked. He said that if you can just get over the very small factor of subtitles, like you will watch such amazing films, and that is so true. You know, like yeah. so many people get caught up on that as soon as they see that it's foreign or their subtitles, especially like Americans. You know, we're stubborn. Oh, very- we think our way is the best way. Mm-hmm. And, um, but no, there's a lot, a lot of French front, oh, French oh, yeah. friends, which is so funny because a little kind of uh, backstory for us is like, we hated <laughs> we- <laughs> our teacher who was just so like yeah. French films, this, and they're so dense and this and that, <laughs> so dense. you know, and, but like, it's crazy. Cause like you get exposed to it and you say, oh, okay, why would I watch this? But then you realize like when you get those opportunities, like wherever you go to like a film festival mm-hmm. or whatever. And you watch something foreign, it's like, whoa. Like, they're like these stories, because, like, you kind of you go into their world and it exposes you to new stuff. But then it's like, how do they think about stories? And they're storytelling yeah. this, like, on steroids. Like, it's, it's you know? so different. Like, it's like, completely different. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, and what most people don't even realize is that it's a lot of um, foreign directors back in the day that now we model yeah. how our movies are especially made. quentin tarantino oh yeah like yeah. he's not the first to do that <laughs> he's you know? just but he's made it popular exactly and he know? made it american mm-hmm. you know so um yeah definitely try to get over that hump um i totally recommend this german uh, i don't know if it's a horror it's definitely a thriller it's called good night mommy and it's trippy. It's crazy. <coughs> See, I don't know. Those are like, that's when it, like, I'm still getting into the horror phase, which mm-hmm. is funny because, you know. But, okay. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I recommend. I think it's on Amazon Prime. Oh, but, I um, just canceled my Amazon Did Prime. you? Well, because I like, I lost my student <laughs> status. So I was just oh, like, yeah. I'm paying for this now. Yeah, mine's about to end yeah. in a few months too. But. Okay. Sweet. Wow, we really sidetracked there. Yeah, I don't know. I think perfect, we need though. a whole podcast just dedicate talking about films because that's what who we are yeah you know? it, it really so. is it's easy to talk about and it is i remember like when i used to so like all right last little thing <laughs> we, um it's like when i started taking film classes and I had to write papers on films to versus then writing papers on about just english bullshit right i was just like damn like i literally could write a two-page paper that i had to do for a film class so easy because i just started getting like sidetracked and just like this one point and i'm just like Oh shit! Like I still gotta fit all these other things yeah, in these two pages yeah. versus I'll be like, so yeah, I had to uh, exponentially fast. You know what I mean? Like I'm like trying to get this word count, yeah. you know. But with film is just you know so much easier to talk about, and it's and film is such a. Ooh, I lost my deep thought. <laughs> film is like, I don't know. Like 
Film is like that pot of soup that you can share with everyone and brings you together. You know what I mean? Because yeah, everyone a loves film movies. can bring in, like, you know, incorporate so many different parts of the mm-hmm. chicken's broth, a little, you know, this, this, and that. And, you know, <laughs> then you mix it all together. You get this amazing concoction. And and you're like, wow. Like, I didn't what? think in the Annapolis Film Festival back in 2015, 16. Yeah. And it won, like, one of the best pictures over there. And, and it was cool seeing, like, it doing the film festival circuit and then it get put on, like, streaming services. Yeah. And I thought, think it's Spanish, I believe. What's it called? Mustang? Mustang. And it, but it's about these, like, little girls who have, like, this, like, I don't know how to explain it. Okay. But it's a really, like, great movie. Yeah. And I've seen it from, like, when it was doing its circuit. Like, the, like, you know, film festival circuit was just us kind of people try to get funding or just get yeah. eyes on a product. And... It was really cool seeing it, like, made it to, yeah, like, Yeah, that's exciting. Netflix. Yeah. So, but anyways. <laughs> so, story time. <laughs> All right. So, I have this movie idea. And I... Okay. That's how we got sidetracked. Because I started talking <laughs> about... I started talking about the type of movies I like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, I had this idea because about... Of, like, a mob family, right? hmm And so, I call it... Well, I don't know. It's not really a, a title. Train Company Thugs, right? That's the... I guess the selling point. Okay. And it's a super small town, right? Where the train still runs through it. So <clears throat> it's kind of more of in like a, f- not really future, but it's more when like the, di- like the nearby future where kind of trains are kind of being not as obs, being obsolete. And, but for this town, the train brings in business mm-hmm. and brings in money and growth. And this, uh, this family, this thug, um, thugs, I don't know how I want to describe them, but they use the train to funnel drugs and um, a bunch of different illegal um, <coughs> things into the cities to become a hub so they can sell and make money. And by doing that, they became powerful and became pretty much the unofficial uh, powerhouses of the town. Mm-hmm. And they pretty much run things. And then... It kind of becomes this reporter who is trying to, you know, he's in a small market and he wants, he has aspirations of being on, you know, CBS News. Fox News is one of those investigative reporters and wanting to break these big stories in Washington, right? And so he's like out late trying to search for stories, driving around. And he's kind of like at his ends meet. He's like, and he's making ends meet. He's definitely kind of getting tired of like these same fluff stories, these puppies out this ground, you know. You know, this person just turned 97 a day. That's the only big news in this town. But at the same time, it was the only place that would take him right out of high school, right right out of college. And so then he kind of witnessed a transaction happen around the train tracks. And he witnessed this, um, like, drugs coming off and, like, kind of... I don't know. I see, like... Why do I see... Um, fucking what's his name? Denzel playing Den- Denzel. this like reporter. Like I can like see the young who played in uh Black Klansman. Oh. Yeah, that's his son. That's his son? Yeah. Oh shit. I... And he has his new movie with Christopher Nolan, Tenet. Oh, He's the star- Tenet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a whole other story. Yeah. <laughs> um I kind of like saw a who well, see, I also kind of like I think maybe because I've seen Nightcrawler. So oh, of course geez. I got like you know, yeah. um, Matt Gillen, Gillen, Jake Gillen, Jake Gillen, Matt. Gyllenhaal. Oh, Matt. <laughs> um, I, I kind of hate Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh my god, I love Jake. Like he, I don't know. Anyways, have you? Seen, okay, never. Mind. I'm not even going to get. I into haven't it. seen Nightcrawler, but <laughs> you, oh my, it's on Netflix. I think you please see. It's because like, I don't like him, so he like freaks me oh, out. But he's such a good. Actor, yeah. though. Yeah, I mean, he's not a bad actor. I don't know. And in End of Watch, have you seen that? Oh, I love End of Watch. I sob every time. It's such a good movie. Yeah. Oh, please. Can you please watch Nightcrawl? I, I, <laughs> I'll like, put it on the list. That movie is, like, insane. <laughs> but I kind of see him or, like, a, um, what's his name? He has, like, two last names. Do you Being want him more to be, like, a manly man or, like... More no, a little like flimsy. I would well. This is how I figure how I think about reporters because reporters hit you most with their words mm-hmm. versus like what's the right word uh, thing. But maybe if I switch the whole dynamic up because he can be both, it maybe 
chance I can. <laughs> like, I see him. And then, like, you know, he doesn't... I could see him... Oh, oh I know. What? Timothy Shamalot? Oh. Do you know what I'm talking about? He's in Little Women. He's in Hot Summer Nights. Hold on, hold He's, on. like, on the come up. He's in a lot of stuff lately. What's I think that's his name. Timothy something. Yeah. I feel like I could see him in that role. Oh, yo, actually, yeah. Yeah. I, like, I, he's a smaller man. Yeah, I like his look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Him. What's the guy? N, 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 oh, Baby Driver. Oh, Ansel Elgort, I yeah. think. I could kind of see him a little bit. Okay. Um, Like, that, that's like kind of ballpark. And, and, you know, that's like. So definitely a younger man. A younger guy, yeah. Because yeah. I want him to be, like, fresh out. Cause he, because, you know, when you're fresh and young, you have this, like energy to make something big make a big splash right immediate because you want to be known to be like i'm not gonna be a punk you know what i mean versus like he was able to he was able to get an opportunity to um get uh like in a a job like in a small market quicker than most people but at the same time he had to work harder just to be in that role mm-hmm. so then he sort of has this like this chip to kind of do it um, yeah, you, I feel like you definitely need some kind of internal um, turmoil for this. Yeah. Like, that's what it sounds like. Because I think that's what's going to push him. For sure. And to give us that dynamic that the audience Yeah, when the want. internal meets the external. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, that'd be pretty good. Yeah. And so the last part about this for my story is this is composer that I've been following for a really long time, which sounds weird. He's not. He was a producer for Childish Game, you know, for all his music. And now he's been in the... Um, uh, mu- uh, movie industry composing music. He did Creed, nice. um, Black Panther. Um, he actually did. He did. The, he worked on 1917. Did he? I see it because I I stayed for the credits yeah. and saw him. <laughs> and Ludwig, oh, I love him so Ludwig. much. Ludwig, yeah, he's like <laughs> German, I believe. Yeah, he's so amazingly talented, and he keeps growing. And I think I'm gonna put this out to the world. They're like. My first feature film that I produce, I want him to compose it. Yeah. Because he's like up in, I think he might be like 30s, in his 30s or whatever, which is still young for a lot of composers. Because like me, mm-hmm. a lot of composers are like 60s, 70s, you know. But like, I want him to compose my film. And I think he, he just, when he did Black Panther, he literally took a month to go to Africa to learn the sound and to like develop, you know, a sound for Black Panther. Nice. Like he, you know, someone who's like dedicated to like really working mm-hmm. for this movie. I want him, and I think it'd just be a dream, just because I've been following him since like 2008. Yeah, you know, no, that'd, that'd be, be awesome, awesome to like you know work with him. So I'm putting that out in the world, and I'm you know, well, say it. You things that you put out, you know, you, more you say it, it will you actually come it true. Exactly. Yeah, so definitely. There you go. That's my story, <laughs> and I'm gonna call it. I don't know what I want to call it. Actually, I hate naming things. Um, I like names that like kind of don't have anything to do with the actual movie. Really? Or it's like a small like you have to figure like a small it out. Detail. You know, um, like I hate. That's why like I'm sure the movie's great and everybody loves it, but I despise Crazy Rich Asians. Like what? I just you haven't, don't. You haven't seen it? I turned it on and I could not pay attention because I was so bored with it. Oh, it's such a good movie. But I also came into it hating it just because of the name. Right, right, right. But I know it's also based off the book. Same thing. I also but... wasn't... Okay, I was kind of the same way. I, I was not as... I would have seen it way earlier mm-hmm. because I was like crazy. Like, I just thought it was a little racist, not gonna lie to you. <laughs> and I was just like, uh, I wasn't feeling it. But then I actually watched it and I kind of like sit back and yeah. Holly did a lot of things. I was like, okay. Everyone I talked to is like, oh, I love that movie. Yeah. Like, it's so great. And I just that can't get into and, it. That um, and You'll Always Be My Somebody. Oh, well, that's with... um. Um, He's a dude on... Uh, what is it? Fresh off the boat, yeah. On ABC, I and think then that's what isn't it's the I can't the chick. She's like she's uh, a comedian. Yeah, she's yeah. A stand-up Chon- she writes for Fresh off the boat. Does she? I believe okay. so. Yeah, I don't remember her name. Yeah, but I don't she either. she was like pregnant too. She did like pregnant stand up too. Yeah, she's always pregnant. And both her, sta- <laughs> I've seen both of her stand up, and she's pregnant both of them. Yeah. So, um, but that's a really good. It's a Netflix movie. It's like a love. I've it's a rom com. It. I've seen the. I haven't actually seen it, but that's a good one. Okay, it's, it's definitely you love rom coms. I like rom coms as <laughs> much as the next person. That's Charles' secret. He loves rom coms. <laughs> but anyway, so what is your offering up for our story? I mean, I always have so many, um, but I actually I thought about this the other day, and lately 
I write kind of what's going on in my life right now. Okay. Um, and lately I've been feeling very trapped, I want to say. Like, oh, okay. I can't tell exactly how or why, yeah. but I feel like I need to amend a lot of bridges or I need to burn a lot of bridges. Mm. And it gave me this inspiration that I want to maybe do this whole expose on specifically my life and like call people out. Like, and I want it to be dramatic and kind of like unnecessarily dramatic because whatever I went through, ah, oh, okay. Well, I'm trying to explain <laughs> it. So like, this is interesting. I think I want to start it at a certain point in my life, maybe high school okay. where you really start to, I mean, I don't even remember like middle school, you know, I mean, I do, but it's, I, yeah, it's not like a, you I don't feel like have a lot big of significant things happen to me starting high school. Right. So I think I want to start there and maybe end to where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. Um, because I do feel like I'm at a turning point in my life, but I feel like there's so much I want to say to certain people of the situations right. I've been through that I want to just make a movie about it and and have and don't hold back, you right. know. Like I want to tell that one friend I had, like how much, like you know, what, however she hurt me or something like that, yeah. or tell a boy that I never told how much like I liked him or something like yeah. that, like through my movie making uh, mind. But oh, okay, can I ask you one question? Yes, go for it. Who will play you? Oh, God. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Like, I think I want, like, a no-name. A no, okay. Yeah, like, okay. Uh, never. Or like, maybe kind of like, eighth grade? Have you seen eighth grade? Yes. Like, okay. she, you know, because it's like, you, when you get a main big person, there's expectations. Right. And I don't, I want it to be fresh, like, you're being introduced to me and my life, mm. you know? So, like. Would you want this to be a first, like, so say if you get a deal, right? Mm -hmm. Like, hey. We love what you what you've been doing. Like we want you to produce something, right? You give you like a three movie contract. Would you make that your first introduction to the world, or would that be kind of like oh. once you kind of done something? Like this is yeah. something I've been really wanting to do, like a passion project. You know what I mean? Like do you start um, with that from the jump? It really just depends if I have a script or not, and how good the script is. Okay. Because some scripts, you know, I've been working on scripts for a long time. Right. Great movies, you know, they could 10 years for a script, you know. Sure. I I kind of like the idea of having it first off the bat because I think it would make a lot of noise. Mm. You know, like, because these it's are true. real life stories that I went through. And like, I, I wanted to be so real that I obviously won't use real names of people. Of course, yeah, but yeah. I want to use their first letter. Like, so they oh. know. I don't want there to be, like, I literally just want to completely expose myself and, yeah. like, just be naked in front of everybody. Oh, I and, like that. Yeah, like, it's... Oh, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, so I've been thinking about that a lot. Um, it's scary, like, definitely, but... Oh, super. I just feel like my whole life I've been very mousy and quiet and timid, and mm. it's not until recently that I feel like there should be things said to people yeah. that have affected me in my life. And going back to what I was saying about how I want to be dramatic and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Like, even if that's not how it was to other people, like that's how it was to me. Right. Right. And that's how I want it to be shown. Even if, if it's not completely accurate, Yeah, but it's still your story. And yeah. You, that's what you should be uh, true to is your story. Your, exactly. You know, like I want to show like, you know, maybe I was feeling a lot inside, but I didn't portray it. So I want to portray it this time. Mm. Like, I, it's like, I almost want to rewrite it right. while telling everyone the truth of how I personally felt, you know? Yeah. I kind of had this, like, I don't know you just said that. Like, I kind of have, like, this uh, picture of, all right, I'm going to paint this scene for you, right? <laughs> Go. And, like, so it's like a confrontation between the two people. Mm -hmm. And the person just going. And I just, it's like, you know, it kind of does, like, this, like, circling around the effect. But then it goes into... So it starts off as a close up of the guy, or let's just call it a guy um, that's yelling at you, and then it kind of goes to a two shot of you just kind of like stone face, or just but like you, you can right. Right, like stone face, stone face, but like you just like holding back, mm -hmm. and then it kind of just switches all the way around, and all one shot, and then it just goes to you, just like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then it kind of does another circle around to where it just kind of stops, and then it flips. And then you are just like, no, you know what I mean? Because I mean, like, it's kind of like almost like you're okay. So it could be like the first scene in a way, because like when you it kind of like insert enters the world with like this is how it was, and then now we're gonna get into their story. Mm -hmm. So like I'm gonna flip the script. Now, that's kind of what the rotating is kind of like flipping the script of this is what it looked like to you and how like you know or at least how like it felt. But now now I'm gonna get like the under like the real like 
story. I'm going to flip it right. to this is what I really need to say or this is what it should have been like in my head. This is what should have happened when uh when this happened well i mean that's i mean that's a huge part of it too is showing the different perspectives of the story like right. even though it is all from my perspective and how i went through it like mm-hmm. i kind of want in certain of these scenes or scenarios that i could be showing on screen like i could be the bad guy you know i'm not perfect this isn't like a a book about everyone who's done me wrong right, you know yeah. like i'm not innocent and i've fucked people up before as much as they fucked me up so it's like I want to be the bad guy and I want to show the different perspectives that people are going through. But you don't want to be as cookie cutter as this is, I'm always the good person. Like give the audience like, cause like I love stuff. Um, Oh, what was it? Have you seen the show you? I saw, I watched the first season. I haven't seen the second. I like that show makes you, it puts you in a weird bond because it's like you kind of Joe, like, okay, he is doing the right thing. Mm Mm-hmm. But in the wrong way. So then it's like, is he the good guy or is he the bad guy? Because what he's actually doing, no, that's like really fucked up. Exactly. But like at the same time, but the reason why he's doing it is for the good. And it puts the audience like, ah, how can you root for someone who's doing, who's being a stalker? Right. You know? It's all those pathos. and Right. <laughs> like- exactly. So that, and, I, and I like when the, when the storyteller te- like gets you in that, like that bond where you, you as the audience become another character and you're have this internal conflict unlike you know along with that character right. and you're just like oh i mean yeah like uh, but like oh what is it uh 13 reasons why oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that's also another show that i was like well i it's mean sometimes. you know what i mean i i didn't even, i haven't even watched the first season I, I didn't know if there was a need for me to watch the other two seasons yeah like, no, but you know. anyways but yeah um yeah i mean I, that's something i've been definitely toying with um there'd be like relationships friendships issues with my family you know and i it's a whole the whole idea that i'm going for is that i really i've been thinking about movies i like and why i like them Mm -hmm. and i've realized i love ordinary stories that aren't ordinary though because of the way they're being told if that makes sense yeah 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 like there's like, something like anyone can sit down or i don't, I don't want to say anyone but you can <laughs> sit down and write an epic thriller right or, you know um but i i really like just these small like stories that mm. were big in your life so Ooh. yeah i like that like, I don't, of- have you seen um ah uh, shit what's it called <laughs> the, <laughs> this um the suicide girls the suicide pact oh fuck what's it called Oh, oh, the Virgin Suicides. Sorry, oh, I don't know. I oh, seen that. it's so great. Um, it's with like Kristen Dunst back in like the two thousands. It's okay. It's a little older, but um, it's just about this group of girls that they're all sisters mm-hmm. and they're all like pure like virgins, and it's just a story like that. And right. it ends up being like it's like has a at the end is crazy, but um, yeah, it definitely inspired me to think about like just how everyday we experience these small time stories. Right. But if you can tell it in a certain way, like it makes it compelling right. in a grander stage. Like you, you can amplify something ordinary to the masses mm-hmm. because everyone will be like, yeah, I also been through that. You know what exactly. I mean? Cause you don't have to, you know, it's like, I can, how can I relate to a rich person getting, you know, like this being, you know what I mean? Like it's big stories. like, you can't relate to. Yeah. And I think that's why I like this show called easy. It's on Netflix. It's like, um, it's called mumble core. I think that, uh, I, I think heard I'm, of it. It's like a genre of of um, of movies, like a like a little subgenre of movies who, or like television or whatever. That's like, it's really focused on like it's um, improv, like uh, dialogue, yeah. And it's supposed to be uh, like really just like real life stuff. And easy, just literally like about is in this town, and it's a bunch of different. Each episode is different, and it's like different couples and how their life is going, and and mostly like it's about around like sex life or like stuff like that's just going on. Like, and you just kind of like. You just it's like really real, just like shit that they go through. Like this one couple who's like, you know, who's the um, it actually has uh, Dave, not Dave, um, his brother. There's two of them. Uh, what, what? Oh, the Francos. Francos, yeah, oh, yeah Dave yeah, Franco. Yeah. He's he he wants to build a um like a brewery, like have like mm-hmm. his own beer, but then all of a sudden his girlfriend gets pregnant, and it's just like and like you see kind of like all the Alice. Um, all the things kind of like boil and like how they deal with it and actually they all kind of connect 
all the people are on the same time. Some of them connect the different stories, but like each episode is like a little bit different. So they kind of go to a different yeah. part in that town. I don't know. It's just, it's a really interesting vibe and I, I really love it. It's really refreshing. I think Joe Swanberg, um, he directed it and I love a lot of his stuff that mm-hmm. he does. And it's just different. It's refreshing. It's based on, it's like real dialogue. It's like some of this stuff is just like, oh, like, you know, it's weird. Like it's, it's like if it's just like everyday life, yeah, you know, and I, I, I kind of like it's. I guess it's kind of what you're talking about, how like it's like ordinary, put on, like you know, it's like ordinary life kind of made, right? But it's not super dramatic, but it's just like it just feels like watching real life, okay, versus not reality and added the you know. The I mean, drama. that's like eighth grade, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, and like mid nineties, like mm-hmm. it's just like small stories that are super compelling and interesting you yeah, know shout out to a24 if you're trying to like look for a new project or whatever you know Yo, a24 is where it's at yeah <laughs> like, so, i mean i'm definitely down for that yeah no i also another factor um that i'm toying with is like we were talking about 1917 like mm-hmm. another thing i liked about that movie is you're never in the same location twice mm. and i think i want to try like doing that but obviously on a more like you know at a, a, in a yeah, city yeah right. but it's like you you never are back in the same spot, and I think right. that just like shows how characters grow and stuff like that. Um, and I, if for some reason I were to use another location twice, it has a meaning, like that locations where something powerful happened, right. or something like you know hurtful or something like that. So, mm. that's yeah, <laughs> that's good because just me knowing a lot about you and like I like you know being there for some of the moments that happened, mm-hmm. and like I can just. And picture, like, just picture, like, how you will probably want to do it. Or at least what right. I will want you to do. I mean, do. you'll definitely be in this. Because like, <laughs> yeah. you're a big part of my yeah. college career. Oh, if if anybody's going to play me, <laughs> it better be O'Shea Jackson. That's what everyone says I look like, O'Shea Jackson. And it's, when I had, like, my hair cut shorter, people yeah. like, oh, my God. This lady in Kilwins was like, you know, she was Southern lady. You know who you favor? <laughs> You favor this gentleman. I just saw you the favor. movie. Yeah, she said favor. I was like, <laughs> okay. Ah, I can't be on the gentleman. Of course, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Just, it was a little, like, it was, like, it was a weird compliment. Yeah. But, and I was like, look, and I was like, dang, I kind of do look like you, O'Shea Jackson. You can produce it and you can find him. And <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. You. I'm definitely, he's definitely up and up. Like, you know, his dad is Ice Cube. So, I mean, yeah, right. he will definitely be that big name to help, you know, get. See, you that's, know. I would prefer, like, everyone else be big except for, like, my actual character. Right. You okay. know, it, it's like all the, I we keep coming back to 1917. <laughs> There's so many cameos, yeah. you know. Wait, in it. who? Oh. oh yeah at the end was um benedict, benedict cumberbatch, cumberbatch yeah which and was then, just like and then i don't know his name but he was in um the avengers the, the the older brother he apparently i haven't seen the avengers but apparently he's in the avengers oh i think i know what you're talking about i think I know, uh, and then there was another guy in the beginning i can't remember who it is though that's really smart producing. That's what I'm talking. It's just like it makes a difference. Because you, you know? can just bring in Benedict Cumberbatch for a day, a day. pay him a day rate. I right, get out of here. You, you we know don't I mean? need you. Right, well, they probably like, spent like half the budget on. Oh, him probably too, easily. So. Like, Damn, you just got the Avengers money. How are we going to get you in here? <laughs> like uh, we could do a half a day, right? But it's like I respect it because it's like you don't need. I mean, I don't know the two main characters, you know. No, but so. you like so invested in exactly, them, you know. So, and then they're going to be stars from this, kind of like for how real. when. Finn, uh, what's his name? Mm, from Star Wars. Oh, um, I should know this. Boy, John boy, Bodega. John Bodega. Boy, but, but, but yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah, he's become a star because of. I mean, that's, I'm kind of weird about that because like a big factory kind of I mean, it's still making a star. Yeah, you know, and now he's like a household name, which brings him to do amazing. He's an amazing actor. He is. He's so um, cute too. <laughs> <laughs> he can get it. <laughs> and I think it kind of shook me that he was British. I was like, "Yo, you're oh, British yes, too." Yes, he's <laughs> insane. I might have to just go to take like me home, John. you know. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go to the UK just so I can develop an accent, just so I can kill it in the United States. You know what I'm saying? But. That's my uh, yeah. You get you have game. an accent. You, I yeah. think you got it. In I'm gonna just create one. I'm gonna just create an accent. I'm like, where you from? Oh, it's from this small town. Of- <laughs> just <laughs> like switch. They're different. gonna think you're special or something. <laughs> okay, no. Okay, okay. I'll work on it. I got time to work on it. But um, yeah, that was awesome. Um, so how much? Okay, this would be the last question about the story. How much money you think? Okay, right, two questions actually. Do you? Th- think you could turn that into a series like an hbo type uh mm. easy because i feel i can see that being like yeah episodic. yeah that's true because i feel like i do have a lot to say and putting that all in one film mm. that could be kind of overwhelming um i don't know maybe i've been really 
really into specifically HBO miniseries right now. Oh my god, HBO is just like I just so... binge Big Little Lies, and I'm obsessed. Oh, that's with the uh, Reese Witherspoon, mm-hmm. right? It's mm. so good. Like you have to watch it. Okay. Um, but it's it's a definite. It's an interesting way to tell stories, you know, because. Yeah. They're all, they kind of are like movies, you know, they're mm-hmm. each an hour long and movies used to be that short, not so yeah. much anymore, but. Yeah, they're like um, three hours now. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, Mark Scorsese. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like you could, I could fit more content, yeah. I feel like. So I think I'd definitely be open Have to Have you that. seen Mrs. Fletcher on HBO? No, but I want to. Okay. So this is what I'll say about Mrs. Fletcher. It's different feel because the author, because it's also a book, the author oh. wrote the screenplay. And so it feels, it doesn't feel like a normal show because a lot of tropes are, I don't know, it's just, it just doesn't have that same vibe of like a TV show. And it's like very pornographic. Yeah, I feel like it would be. You know what I mean? Just like, you know, kind of like books kind of be. So I was like, oh, this is like refreshing, but Mm -hmm. it is like also a weird pace. And I'm just like, but it's good. It's really good. Um, What is her name? I I know exactly who it is. I think she was on SNL, wasn't she? She was, yeah. Uh, I, I also that. don't like her. I think that's why I haven't watched it yet. She's kind of obnoxious to me, but but she does like this role. She was like, she plays like this mom who's kind of like mm-hmm. her kids going off to college, and he, his kid, her kids like a prick, you know. And yeah. but she likes, and he likes her dad more, and doesn't realize how how hard being a single mother is. And then once now she's like empty nesting, and so. I feel like it's like a show dedicated to Meredith from The Office. Like, <laughs> yo, she kind of looks like yeah. Mer- like a hotter Meredith. They're both like redheads, yeah. too, aren't they? Oh, actually, yeah. We've been watching The Outsider Caitlin on Hawn. HBO. Catherine Hahn. Yeah, I don't know. Hawn. I know I don't know her name, yeah. but I know exactly. You said The she Outsider is. on HBO. Oh, yeah, it was a Stephen King novel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's is the, it- the first three episodes were amazing, and I was hooked, and then it's just like just flatlined and oh, really? it's just not going anywhere Dang. so i know i'm pretty disappointed but hbo i need to get my H- i'm gonna wait till hbo max come back out you know oh, cancel yeah. for a little bit yeah because hbo max is about to be friends insane friends i need friends i need friends back because mm-hmm. like, i'm like on my like seventh watch of office right, right. now you know and i'm just like I, I started watching superstore which is like oh yeah i've seen the superstore. office of but for retail i watched it when it came out like i remember when they were oh, making really? promos but i got kind of bored of it so yeah. I've been binging it for like yeah. the last week or two. I'm like almost caught up. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, it's so much good TV out there. It just kind of like depends like what's your flavor of the month, right? You know, and like I just started watching. I just finished Dead to Me. It's like 30 minute episodes, 10 episodes, and it's about um, this uh, mom. She lost her husband, and the person who actually killed her husband wound up. She like. Okay, so have you ever seen? Oh, have you ever show called Married Married with Children? It's so old. It's old. I don't. I can't tell you like okay. anything about oh it. I, so, I can see the title yeah. on my TiVo. Love like, and marriage. Yeah. <laughs> I used to. I, it's weird. I used to watch that like every morning. When I used to get up. I used to come on like TBS, mm-hmm. and I just love it. Kelly Bundy, who's like just like plays his airhead daughter. She's like now she's like forty eight, and she's like I didn't realize that was her. And then Daph uh, Velma. She who played on Scooby Doo, like yeah. the live action, she's in it. Oh, okay. And like the per- thing about like the person who killed your husband winds up befriending you and being really close with your family. Mm-hmm. Then you find out, and then you know, yeah. It's, 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 Is that on Netflix? It's on Netflix. Okay. It's a Netflix uh, series. Oh, okay. It's a quick watch. It's really interesting, and I like how there's a lot of backstory about big gaps that they don't tell you. And then it kind of has these little bit of flashbacks, mm-hmm. but it's not like a long flashback, but it's like a flashback. Like, it like reveals just enough information to be like, oh, and then it teases stuff as yeah. well to keep going. I'm like, okay. Interesting. I have yeah. a lot of shows on my watch list right now. Me too. So, but I'm I always sure. just sit there and watch Gilmore Girls just reruns. Like, I can't stop. Reruns are so easy to do, God, like, you know, because like you really got to be invested to like, because like I always, I don't know for a reason, I'm, I'm going to start watching this new show and then like three minutes in, I'm just like already on my phone. Exactly, yeah. It's hard and, to keep my attention these days. Yeah. It's kind of, I swear I blame it on The Office. Like that 30 minute, not even, like, like 24 minutes, yeah, yeah. minutes of just nonsense. And now when I try to watch something serious, I'm like, ah, oh, like I need to be doing something <laughs> right, else, yeah. you know? Yeah. But yeah, I need to get it together. But sweet, thank you so much, Kim, thank you. for, uh, this is a good episode. Like we kind of definitely got I know. really into it. Um, we killed it this episode. Uh, we definitely will have you back on and do more film talk and 
we'll maybe do more stories. Maybe break down some stuff. Yeah. I don't know. We, the world is po- endless. <laughs> endless. I mean, this you're just getting an insight to what me and Charles talk about all the time. Yeah. Like, among other things as yeah. well. <laughs> <laughs> if we're not gossiping, then yeah. we're film talking. Or drinking. Or drinking. <laughs> but I've been a good boy until next month of March. So, um, But yeah, this was so much fun. Um, so... Yeah, um, so yeah, you can follow me on IG at CJT Creations. Um, where can they find you? Do you want to give out your social media? Oh, sure. It's up to you. Like, it, you know, it's just like if you yeah, want. Yeah, no, it's not popping. It's nothing like Charles content. But um, hey. you could find me on Instagram, K-I-P-P underscore seven, I believe. I yeah, think that's it. Something like find that. me on Venmo. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, definitely follow her. Um, check out the uh, Songs of the Week uh, playlist on Spotify as well. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. This was episode number nine. And we are on the quest to 100 episodes each week. We keep getting better and better. And like always, keep it creative.